Hello and welcome to the Chapter 8 Friday video. Um, let's go ahead and jump right in. It's going to be problem number 4. I chose that one because it's for the t-base confidence intervals. Now the formula for the t-base confidence interval is given on page five, uh, 358 in your textbook. 358. Please compare that formula with the formula for the z-based confidence interval which is on page 353. You'll notice there's only one, there is only two differences, I guess there's only, there are only two differences between the two. For the z-based, you have a sigma, because you know the population standard deviation. For the t, you don't know the population standard deviation, so you don't use sigma, you use s, the sample standard deviation. That's the first difference. And notice that we're given S, not sigma, therefore we use T. And the second thing is in the Z confidence interval, page 353, you see a Z sub-alpha over 2. For the T-based, you see T sub-alpha over 2. That is a very important difference because the Z is a different distribution than the T. The T is a little bit wider, that is, it has a higher variation than does the Z. And the reason for that variation is we're not certain what that population standard deviation is. We only have the sample, greater uncertainty. So let's go ahead oh, and begin. X bar. We need to know alpha. And from that we get a T. We need a sample size. We need a standard deviation for the sample, and that's what we need. We are given x bar is 50.575. We're given alpha is 1 minus 95%. That's 0.05. We're given n, our sample size is 40. And we're given an s of 1.6. Play that t value in Excel. It's going to be equal to t dot inv. We are calculating t values. You use t dot inv. We are calculating probabilities based on the t. You use t dot dist, dist. Just like with the z values, if you had to calculate a z value, you would use norm dot inv. But if you need probabilities, it would be norm dot dist. And this is going to be a two-tailed confidence interval. They almost always are two-tailed. And now we have to give it the probability. That probability is alpha. The degrees of freedom for one sample are going to be n minus 1. So there's the t value. Now you may be asking yourself right now, wait a minute, th shouldn't that be t sub alpha over 2? And the answer is yes. The over 2 came from choosing t dot inv dot 2t. If your version of Excel does not have the dot 2t version, then the probability is going to be alpha over 2, and the degrees of freedom will be n minus 1. You know, you've got the negative sign there, so just put a negative in front of that t dot inv, and the numbers are identical. So the lower confidence limit, that's going to be equal to x bar minus that t value times sigma divided by the square root of n. So there's the lower limit. The upper confidence limit, that's going to equal to x bar plus that t value times sigma divided by the square root of n. So we are 95% confident that mu is between 50.04929 and 51.10071. So here's the confidence interval. We need to round to three places. I'm going to have Excel do that for me. There's three. 50.049. Fifty one point one oh one. 
Now we're going to use the Excel output on page 418, uh, I'm sorry, on figure 814. Figure 814 is in the textbook. It's located on page 363, and that gives us descriptive statistics for yield. And all we have to do is locate some of the information. We've got the confidence level at the very bottom of 24.3948. We've got the mean at the very top of 811. Wait a minute. 811, that doesn't look right. So maybe we shouldn't look at figure 814. Perhaps we should be looking at figure 815. Let's double check. 815 is Excel output for exercise 824, the trash bag case, which matches what we have here. Whereas 821, I'm sorry, 814 is for exercise 821, which is chemical yield, which is not here. So be aware that this should be 8.15. So 8.15, we have a confidence level and we have the mean. The mean is 50.575, and we subtract off that confidence level of 0 0.5257. That will give the lower confidence limit. And then the upper confidence limit will be the mean of 50.575 plus that confidence level of 0 0.5257. Now to find out what those values actually are, we'll throw an equal in front, and we'll throw an equal in front of that, so that we get those down to three decimal output, no one. It's amazing that those numbers are the same. And by amazing, I mean phew, we just checked our work. It's pretty good. Now, the most important thing here. Are we 95% confident that mu is at least 50 pounds? at least 50 pounds. That is, are we 95% confident that mu is greater than 50? In other words, you remember what these confidence intervals actually mean. We're 95% confident that mu is between the lower and the upper limit. Notice that the lower and the upper limit are both above 50. Therefore, we are at least 95% confident that the mu is greater than 50. Because we're 95% confident that it's between 50.049 and 51.101. We're actually more confident that it's greater than 50, but they only wanted to know if we're at least 95% confident. Yes, the interval is um, the interval is greater than 50, and that's it. To calculate confidence intervals for one sample based on the t. You need an X bar. <coughs> you need a S. X bar is the sample mean. S is a sample standard deviation. You need an N, a sample size. I need to know your alpha, which is 100% minus your confidence level of 95%. And the lower limit is just X bar minus the T times S divided by the square root of N. And the upper is just x bar plus t times s over the square root of n. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself, and good luck on the midterm next week, or the week after, whatever the midterm is.